Our goblins, my name is the Medical Goblin today and I'm going to be telling you which races are best for PvP in World of Warcraft Legion. Now the answer to this question is fairly simple for Alliance, but for Horde it gets like complicated. I'm like I'm looking at my script here. I mean like Alliance has about three bullet points and then Horde has about twenty odd. But anyway, let's jump into it. Let's talk about Alliance first because I think people want to know that the most. I think the king option, the new master race for Alliance, a lot of people are still saying it's human. Human is very strong still, but I actually think it's Draenei, right? But you have to hear me out, you have to hear me out. I think Draenei can only really be strong if a lot of people pick Draenei. Um, and this is because of Gift of Nauru. Gift of Nauru is a 20% heal um, over 5 seconds, and that can be increased with buffs. Um, no, actually no, it can't be increased with buffs anymore. And basically, if you imagine three people in an arena playing Draenei, imagine your healer gets absolutely locked down, stunned, and everything, and they can't heal. Imagine if two of DPS who aren't really healing can't provide off heals or any really any uh, form of support. Imagine if you're playing PhD, Hunter can't do anything to support, uh, another DK can't do anything to support, really. Imagine if they could pop a 40% heal onto their healer over five seconds. That could be the difference between winning at, uh, losing arena and dying or, or not. And I think it's, um, if everybody picks Draenei, if you're a very serious team, you know, you want to push rate, and I think it, I would encourage you, basically, to pick Draenei. Three people with Draenei in Arena is just going to be mental. Imagine it in Rated Battlegrounds. I mean, nobody's ever going to die. If you if you coordinate it and time it really well, the Draenei heal can be absolutely exploited into the ground. And also, because Draenei is definitely going to be the best deep, um, in terms of DPS for literally um, pretty much every single class. Um, every single spec because of the way heroic presence scales is just simply the best DPS option um, in PvE as well. And I think human is definitely the second best choice and this is because um, I will choose human. You may think oh but gnome you know has a has a snare remover on a short cooldown but the thing is like snares have shorter cooldown. Sometimes snares don't even have a cooldown. So really you're always just gonna get snared and snared and snared. But as a human you know it pops you out of a stun. Stuns normally have fairly long cooldowns. You're looking at like 30 seconds, sometimes 45 seconds, sometimes a minute cooldown, right? And if you've got something that's going to pop you out, something like that, then it's definitely going to be best. And then for Druid, then Night Elf is going to be best because of Shadow Mode. Sometimes in Shadow Mode you can um, get get away, get out, get out of like certain CC. If you can see a CC being cast on you, then you can use Shadow Mode for it to like basically fail. Um, and that is it's kind of nice. As a druid, you can also use it to re-stealth, which is kind of nice as well. But you, some people are saying that oh, it's going to be awesome for rogue, isn't it? Now, but really, honestly, the time it takes to use shadow mail to get a re-stealth is first of all takes ages, and in that time you're probably gonna like lose a lot of DPS, a lot of pressure, and most of the time it just doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work for shit because you're always taking dark damage, and you're always going to be in combat. I mean, it just, sometimes it just it barely works, and you're going to be seriously you're going to be disappointed with Shadow Meld, unfortunately. But anyway, let's start, start talking about Horde. I think Belf is definitely going to be the best option for any melee DPS. Um, basically, it's, it's not only it's first of all it's the best um, an increase in melee DPS. You should check out my PV guide for the reasons for that. But basically, when it, um, I mean Arcane Torrent now increases, um, well, basically regenerates resources as well as mana, so it's always basically the best DPS increase. And also because of the silence. Silence, there isn't, there isn't a lot of silences in the game. A lot of melee DPS don't even have silence. I would also encourage you to pick Belf maybe as a mage because you can blink and then use Arcane Torrent, which is kind of useful. But for casters who you know aren't really that maneuverable, then you're probably going to suffer. And it's not really going to be that beneficial. It's not a DPS increase, and you probably won't be able to use that silence very often. And the, you know simply because troll for most cast every single caster basically it's a better dps increase because of a haste increase um and it's also a better op troll is also a better option for hunter and um, but you may you may find blood off a bit use more useful for hunter because obviously hunter's a bit more maneuverable but you may think hunter is obviously going to be orc but the orc the orc ratios are just mathematically absolutely terrible the the one that increases pet damage is it's it's tiny, and the the, the blood fur blood fur, fur, furry fur, f, what blood fury is um it's just it doesn't it's not it's not that good compared to the other um basically DPS buffs from the other racials, and uh, so let's now let's talk about druid and shaman because obviously druid and shaman have limited options. For Feral, I'd definitely go for Torrent uh, simply because it provides the most damage, but also for the stun, you may not be able to use the. Um, you may not be able to benefit from the stun's full duration, 
but you will be able to use it to interrupt a, a cast, which can also, you know, obviously be the difference between getting a kill or not. Uh, for balance, then troll just simply takes over for damage. Um, for enhancement shaman, I definitely go for troll because um, it, first of all, it's more damage. Plus, you have um, the duration of snares reduced with uh, do the do the shuffle. Um, so you know, snare snare reduce, re uh, duration reduced slightly is just going to be a bit more beneficial. And you already have like quite a lot of stuns as a an enhancement shaman with the uh, PVP talent. So the the extra stun from Torrent probably won't even be able to be um, used at all. For elemental Torrent, you know, it does more damage, and the stun will just come in useful. So now let's talk about the healing spec. This is when it gets more complicated. For Resto Druid, you know, obviously your spec benefits from haste more than crit since it's all about hot. So as soon as you pop Berserking, then it will immediately increase the speed of your hots, which is extremely nice. It's a very powerful healing cooldown. For Resto Shaman, it, it, Tauren is going to be useful since within that time you can get a, you know, that the stun is on, then you can get a really big heal. You know, you've got your Earth Grip Totem, and then you move away, you can get a big heal off, and then you've got a stun. And this this shaman stuns, you know, rest of shaman stuns aren't really that good um, because people people can all, uh, count of them very easily, you know, because it's the, it's the totem stun. And people see it and just yeah, there's there's a totem stun that can just kill the totem. So it's not, you, this stun is definitely going to be more useful for a shaman. But for priest, undead is going to be better simply because of the fear pop. Um, you know, will of the forsaken is going to definitely be the difference between letting a teammate die or not. And for paladin, then um, holy paladin. Torrin is um, easily going to be king because of the extra crit healing. You know, Holy Paladin is all about getting crit healing, and obviously because of the stun. And you know, the stun, um, you've got like the other, you've got blinding light and stuff, so you don't. It's not going to conflict with many um, stuns in your spec. And uh, just you know, yeah, and that, uh, that's a good point actually because if you're going to choose Torrin, then make sure you favour non-stun talents. You know, to counter um, DPS so that the ratio doesn't have DR and basically become useful, useless. And for Miss Weaver, then you simply go for uh, um, Undead for the, the Fear Pop. And uh, you know, that is pretty much it. I'm going to pause for a sec to think about if I've actually missed anything. I think we should just do like a little um, little quick recap. Basically, Draenei, I think, is going to be the strongest option for our Alliance. But if you can't pick a Draenei because you're a class, then Human will come out on top. And then obviously you got Nelf for Druid, and it's as simple as that. Then for melee DPS as a horde, definitely Belf. Okay, for a caster, DPS caster, troll, every single time. And then for Druid, Druid Feral, Tauren, Balance, Troll, Hansman is going to be Troll, Elemental is going to be Tauren. And then for the healing specs, Resto Druid is going to be Troll. For Resto Shaman, it's going to be Tauren. And then for Priest, it's going to be Undead. For Paladin, it's going to be Tauren. And then for Undead, it's going to be, uh, for Miss Weaver, it's going to be Undead. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, obviously, the differences between these really strong options that I've told you uh, is kind of marginal. You can definitely pick a Troll Priest if you wanted to. It's definitely not going to be that much, much, of a dis much of a disadvantage. But obviously, for our certain races, the races that I haven't mentioned, which are significantly weaker than the options that I have mentioned. So it is just important, basically, if you choose the options. You know, you may not want to play a Draenei. You know you're worried. You don't want to play Draenei. Fair enough. Just go for human. Okay. Anyway, uh, my name is the Metagoblin. Until my next video. Ciao.